students engaged in instruction is critical. We all know that if students aren't engaged in the instruction, they're not learning. What are some ways that we can make sure that students are engaged? Well, we can provide them with brain breaks. Learning is a tough process. There's a lot of information coming at us. There's a lot to process. Every once in a while, we need a little break. But how can we integrate in brain breaks that still allow students to practice academic vocabulary, to build social skills and collaboration, and ways that we can make brain breaks fun and exciting, but not a waste of time? Let's look at three different kinds of brain breaks we can integrate into instruction. What is a brain break? A brain break is an opportunity for us to pause, to stop what we're doing, what we're focusing on, and shift our attention elsewhere for just a moment. One way we can integrate in brain breaks is by having students move. By having students stand up and move about the classroom, we're providing them an opportunity to oxygenate their brain. This helps students to refocus. Now, where do we have them move to and why would they move? Well, there's a variety of ways that we can do this. Elementary teachers might have students move from their desks to the carpet, where they're gonna provide some instruction. They might have them then go back to their desks to practice some of that instruction. We can also have students stand up and go meet with someone besides the people in their team. One strategy I love to use is the find someone who strategy. In this one, when I engage students in a 10-2 discussion where they're going to talk about a prompt, talk about learning, I have them stand up and go meet with someone else from a different team. There are any number of criteria that you can use here. Sometimes I'll say to students, meet with someone who has a similar pair of shoes as you. Sometimes I'll say, meet with someone who has the same or an adjacent birth month as you do. I have a December birthday, for example, so I can meet with somebody with a November, a December, or a January birthday. Or sometimes I'll say, meet with someone who has a similar number of siblings. There are any number of tools that you can use. The idea is that students stand up and go meet with someone else. This provides a little bit of movement and a little bit of break from sitting and learning in one spot. You can engage students in a four corners activity. Based on a specific criteria, they head to a certain space in the room. You might have students who were born at a certain time of the year go to one corner, other students who are born at a different time in another corner. You might have students who prefer one activity in one corner or a different activity in another. Provide some criteria for students to head to a specific corner of the room and engage in a conversation with the people that are there. By having students get up and move, we're breaking the routine of learning. We're providing a different way for students to engage and with different people than the ones they're sitting with in their team. If you don't want students to get up and move, you can use a different strategy. For example, stretching and deep breathing. This is a very easy one. One strategy that I like to incorporate in is called 3DB, or three deep breaths. Here, I engage students in taking a few slow, deep breaths with me. Let's try this one together. Take three deep breaths with me. First, sit comfortably. Do a quick scan of your body. Are you feeling any tension anywhere? Let's take those three deep, slow breaths together. First, nice deep breath in and breathe out. Second one, deep breath in, and breathe out. This time, put your hand on your stomach, and as you breathe in, see if you can make your belly rise. And breathe out. Rescan your body now. Do you feel any different? For some people, they don't. For me, I always feel a little more relaxed in my shoulders just helps me to release a little bit of tension. This simple activity only takes a few seconds, but can help students to re-energize. Another activity you can use is some simple stretching. Here are three simple stretches that you can incorporate in with your students. The first one is called fan your hands. Here, students stretch out their arms in front of them and then stretch their fingers apart. Do this one with me as you take a nice deep breath Excellent. The second one is called wing it. Here, you put your hands behind your head and then stretch your elbows back. Again, take a nice deep breath in 
and out as you stretch. Excellent. The third one is called listen to your body. Here is where you point your ears, bring your ear down to your shoulder on one side, take a nice deep breath, and then move to the other side and do the same thing. Now, you don't have to do all of three of these at the same time. Just every once in a while, provide the opportunity for students to be reinvigorated by moving their bodies just a little bit with a quick stretch. The third brain break is to engage students in poems, songs, and chants. These are an integral part of every GLAD unit. Here's the thing though, you can engage students in these songs and chants and poems at any time. Anytime students need a quick break from what they're focusing on. Let's say, for example, you're in the middle of practicing mathematics. You're in your math block, you're focusing, working really hard on math. And you're seeing that it's difficult, that students are really working hard and they might just need a quick brain break. This is a great time to have students stand up and join you over at one of the songs, poems, or chants that you're utilizing in your integrated thematic unit. Even if the song doesn't pertain to what you're focusing on right now, it's reinforcing the key vocabulary, the key concepts that you're learning in a different part of the day. This helps students to reinforce that knowledge, reinforce the vocabulary, while also taking a quick break from what you're working on. By building in some movement, you're taking students away for just a moment from what they were working on, reinvigorating, and then getting back to focus, getting back to the task at hand. Lots of teachers have been building brain breaks into their instruction. By building in movement, having students do some stretching or some deep breathing, or utilizing poems, songs, and chants, we're giving students a quick brain break and helping them to refocus and get ready for learning what's next. These skills aren't just important for the classroom. These are self-regulation strategies. As students get older, become more independent, as they're studying in high school, in college, as they're at work and they're concentrating on challenging and difficult tasks, they can find ways to recenter and refocus. This is a skill that'll help them throughout their lives. It's important for students. We know that our youngest students can't sit and concentrate for very long. They need differing activities, movement, etc. It's a skill that everyone benefits from, both in the classroom and throughout their lives. To learn more, join us on one of our social media platforms, take one of our online courses, or visit our website.